It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Seattle Seahawks and the Cincinnati Bengals. And it's all just ahead on Madden NFL 24. On a picture-perfect Midwestern afternoon for football, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Paycor Stadium in Cincinnati. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But, Charles, a lot of people see these Bengals as legitimate contenders to get to the Super Bowl. And remember, they got there just two years ago. What do they need to do to get back? Well, we know how well positioned they are on offense, partner, because they have one of the best quarterbacks in the game and a lot of firepower to go with it. But how about what they did in the draft this year? A lot of capital expended on the defensive side of the ball, trying to slow down some of the other top contenders. Meanwhile, for the visiting Seahawks, most of the pundits, yourself included, Charles, gave their draft class high marks. And that comes after a year where they struck gold in the fifth round with Tariq Woolen. And they also struck gold in the offensive line, getting brand new tackles at left and right. Struck gold with a running back who was a big time runner as a rookie. Yeah, there's something to be said about building through the draft. We are set to go. Evan McPherson to do the honors, and we are underway from Cincinnati. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense, and it is a first-time Pro Bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. When the Seahawks named Smith the starter last season, it gave him an opportunity he wasn't sure he would get again. And then he became one of the best quarterbacks in football and sustained it across a full 17 games when he come back player of the year. Saved his career with last season and keeps the Seahawks as true contenders. They come up with exactly one minute to go in this first quarter. The leading rusher among rookies a season ago. Here's Kenneth Walker. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Geno out of throw. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And Lockett going to pick up a Seahawks first down as the tackle going to be made up at the 37. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Throwing now is Geno. Man open downfield, it's Metcalf. Down to the 10, and all the way in, touchdown. Seattle DK Metcalf 63 yards and the Seahawks need just three plays to go down and take the early lead well, they said that they wanted to get him involved early and what a way to cap their opening drive Charles we know he's one of the fastest receivers in the NFL and he showcased it on that play and when you have a guy like that you want to make sure the defense sees him early, right? You want to see how they're going to adjust, how they're going to try and guard him, because they can't replicate his speed in practice unless they've got one of the few guys who are as fast as he is. And all it took was one drive, he burned them, and I don't think it's the last time they call his number in this one. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Seahawk football here to start quarter number two as they've got it as we resume action.
Here's Myers now to kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And the Bengals now set for their first possession, and it's pro bowler Joe Burrow who leads this offense in his fourth season now out of LSU. And his task in this situation is making sure this team knows that there's a sense of urgency, yet somehow still stays calm. Because your natural impulse, your first possession is not until the second quarter, is you got to attack right away. Throw something big at them right away. Yeah, you've got to move the ball, but maybe be a little bit careful in doing so. Now Burrow on first down. Man open, that's Jamai Chase complete. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Burrow will throw. And the catch made, it's Tyler Boyd. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Meanwhile, Burrow's throw caught by Higgins. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. He gets this one to Boyd. And he's going to have a first down here. They're also in the field goal range at the 28. Seems as if the passing attack's starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. And this will be a 45-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. Well, still trailing here, but they do get the late field goal. Now their defense will try to keep this score right where it is heading into the locker room. Yeah, and trailing at the break, you obviously don't want to go in off of a negative play. Give them credit for that one. Finding a way to put points on the board. Give them any type of a spark, anything to build off of as they try and plan a comeback. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
The box set to get the football first, and they trail here as we get started in the second half. And this will not be returned, so the second half begins with a touchback. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well and they've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. Burrow looking to pass. That's caught by the tight end, Earl Smith Jr. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that could really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. All three timeouts still at their disposal. Here's first and ten now. Burrow's throw taken in here by Chase. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Okay, there's three timeouts left, right? I think you got to use one here, don't no you? Doubt about it. I'd use one right here. This is first and ten. To throw Burrow. And his throw here is incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Just over 30 seconds remain. Here's second and 10 now. Burrow. His throw incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. A big play looming on third down. Burrow. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops with 23 seconds to go in the game. Here we go, first and goal. Now Burrow. Back of the end zone, could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. And this one incomplete. So the clock stopped now with 20 seconds remaining. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight yard line, second and goal. Throwing Burrow. And he's got it. It's caught for a touchdown. And they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. What an outstanding drive right there to take the lead. And also, Charles didn't leave their opposition with a whole lot of time on the clock. Yeah, I like the way that you're viewing this because they did a tremendous job to put themselves in a position to win. But they can't celebrate just yet. They've got to clamp down on any big plays and force them to use up those timeouts without making any headway. 
Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And it would appear, barring some late heroics, they're going to get out of here with a come-from-behind victory. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. They'll come up first and 10 here. Smith's going to throw it. The bigger pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Now a final chance to stop it here as a timeout comes in with 10 seconds left in the game. They'll come up now on second down. Here's Smith. Gets this complete to Smith and Jigba. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. One last throw here for Smith. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So the game will continue for at least one more play. To not finish a game on a defensive penalty, that's why they get one more untimed attempt. And his kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. And we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime, because neither one got an advantage today. It's the Seahawks who are going to get the first crack at things. They'll possess it to start things off here in overtime. DJ Dallas to return it from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Seattle now ready to march onto the field. The last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. Short game there to start overtime. Almost a tester play, wasn't it? Wanted to see if the guys on defense were going to fit the gaps the correct way because we're in overtime. So it's not just physical tiredness out there, right? Mentally, are you still doing what you're supposed to do? And they were up to the task of that play. And certainly fatigue on both sides of the football. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. What will they draw up to try to keep this opening drive of overtime moving? Third and seven. 
First throw here in overtime for Smith. Uh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. The temptation to go for it probably there always is, especially in overtime. Got to punt it, though. I think you're right. I think that you absolutely have to punt it away and trust your defense, especially play a little field position here. But you're so right about the temptation. Another way to satisfy that, though, line up in punt formation and fake it. That's another way to get it done. That's pulled in at the 32. It's a 42-yard punt, but eight on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. The Bengals drive about to get going. Well, their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points. And now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal and they get the victory. Yeah, and this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old school guys that like sudden death right from the beginning. Well, we've got it now because any points wins the game. On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return. You can win it as well. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. From the 48-yard line, here's second down and two. Now time to see what Burrow can do here at OT. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Boyd. And Boyd going to pick up the Bengals' first down as he'll be taken down at the 46. Here's Burrow. He gets this in the hands of Mixon. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. They go play action with Burrow. Short throw to Smith. So the OT clock hits zero, and we're still not done. We'll switch sides and need at least one more OT to decide it after this. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Back to Mixon on second down. Oh, heck of a move. Man. What a great effort there. He's going to get this inside the 15. And they will spot it at the 13-yard line. Nice run. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now it's Burrow. Throw left side complete. That's Boyd. So the OT clock hits zero, and we're still not done. We'll switch sides and need at least one more OT to decide it after this. From the six now on second and three. Now it's Burrow.
Charles, a very simple mission anytime that you play on your home turf, and that is to defend your home turf, and today that mission was accomplished. Look, every offseason, every preseason, the head coach goes in front of the team and says, the mission for the season, defend our home field 